This is chapter four, part five. In this lesson, we will continue to talk about center and spread, but now we will be talking about symmetric distributions and we will calculate the mean and the standard deviation. When a distribution is skewed, the median and IQR are the best way to, to describe the center and spread since they are resistant measures to outliers. However, when a distribution is roughly symmetric, we should use the mean to measure the center. And the mean, as you know, is just an average. So to find the mean, you simply add up all the observations and divide by the sample size. And when you use the mean to measure the center, you always couple that with the standard deviation for describing the spread. Graphically, the mean is a, of a distribution is located at the balancing point of the distribution. In other words, the mean is the value that balances the deviations from the mean. The mean is not resistant to outliers, which is why we only use the mean for symmetric distributions. So the way it is affected is if you have an outlier or a skewed distribution, the mean will be pulled in the direction of the outlier or the skewness, which means the median will be in the middle. The mean would be to the right of that if the distribution is skewed right, and the, the mean would be to the left if the distribution is skewed left. Another way to measure the spread of distribution is to estimate the average deviation from the mean. This quantity is called the standard deviation. So we will take this data value, this data set about home runs hit by a particular team, and we will calculate the mean and the standard deviation. So here we have more room to work. Okay, so first thing we'll do is calculate the mean. To do that, we will add up all these data values and then divide by 10 because there are 10 data values. Okay, the sum of this is 70, and there are 10 data values. So if we divide by 10, we find that x bar equals 7. So that's the mean, x bar. Next, we're going to find the standard deviation. So to find the standard deviation, we first find all the deviations. So how far is each value from the mean? So we're going to do x minus x bar. So 1 minus 7, 13 minus 7, etc. So we have calculated all the deviations. And here we have all the deviations. Now remember, the mean is the balancing point for the deviations. So if we were to average this list of deviations, it should come out to 0 because the mean is right in the middle. So to make sure it does not come out to 0, what we will do is square all the deviations. And this ensures that they all become positive. And then once we have squared all the deviations, we will add them up. So we get a total of 154 for all our squared deviations. Now to get the standard deviation, we take the sum of all the deviations and we divide it by n minus 1. Since there are 10 data values, we're going to divide 154 by 9. That gives us 17.1. This number here is called the variance, and we call that S, S squared. To find the standard deviation, you take the square root of that number, and standard deviation is given the symbol S, so it's the square root of 17.1, which is 4.14. So what we can say is that for this team, a typical amount of variation from the mean is 4.14 home runs. So what would happen if this last value in our data set were 41 instead of 11? Well, if that value were 41, then it would make our total much more, and our mean would end up being 10 instead. So as you can see, the mean is not resistant to outliers. If we did all our calculations over again with 41 instead, um, that would change our deviation here on this last one, giving us a much higher total. And in the end, our standard deviation with that outlier would be 11.57.
So the standard deviation is not resistant to outliers either. So if you have a distribution with outliers present, then you should use the median and IQR. If your distribution is symmetric without outliers, then you should use the mean and the standard deviation.